few months ago, Bethesda asked us to create a costume for them. And of course, we were super excited because we just loved all of their games. Especially me, because one of my first RPGs I played when I was young was The Elder Scrolls Morrowind. So yeah, I was super hyped. They wanted us to build one of their newest armor creations from the new Elder Scrolls Online add-on, Elsewhere. In this new chapter, the dragons returned to Tamriel and we had the honor to bring the Dragonbone armor to life. We only had about three and a half weeks for the costume, which was super crazy. So we combined a lot of different techniques like sculpting, mold making and casting, 3D modeling, sewing. We also used real steel for the chainmail and yeah, it was a lot of fun, crazy and stressful, but still fun. First, I started sculpting all the armor parts. I really like to use oil-based clay because you can reuse it. It does not dry out while you're working with it. We had this cast from Ralph's upper body from another project and it was just perfect for sculpting the breastplate. Sculpting is actually one of my passions in costume making. It is super relaxing and I really enjoy working on organic pieces like this one. Most of the time I use my hands for sculpting, but I also have a bunch of different tools I like to use when it comes to the more detailed parts. For smoother textures, it can be helpful to use a thin foil. For the breastplate, I only needed about one and a half days, which is okay for me. The plan was to sculpt the whole armor in only one week. After the sculpting process, it is time to make the mold. A super fast and easy way is to make a brush on silicone mold. I like to use my all-time favorite silicone Re-125 and I applied several layers until it was thick enough. To keep the silicone mold in shape, you need a mold jacket and I always make mine out of epoxy resin and fiberglass. The first mold of the first armor part was a success, so off to the next part. I think the bag is my favorite part of the armor because I really love the combination of the spine bones and the ribs. Patterns are not only helpful for sewing or working with foam, I sometimes like to use them to find the right shape for my sculptings. Vitesa gave us perfect reference pictures, so I just scaled it to Ralph's proportions, printed it out and used this to create some clean patterns of the spine bones. I sculpted the spine in one piece and made the bone plates look like they are overlapping each other. My plan was to cast the whole thing in one piece and then cut apart the bone plates. The spine needed to be flexible, otherwise Ralph could not bend his back, which would not be very practical. Fun fact, the bracers are always the first armor part I make when we build a new costume. I think it's because the bracers are some of the easier costume parts and they are also not that big. So if you don't know where to start on a new costume, just take the bracers to get into the creative flow. For the bracers, I also first made a pattern out of paper. In the past, I often built my armor completely out of warbler and I still sometimes use it for my costumes. Here I use it to make the base shape of the bracer out of a double layer warbler's pearl yard. All the details and textures were sculpted on top of it with oil-based clay. The mold again was made with Rebound 25 and a fiberglass jacket to keep the mold in shape. Because of our very short time schedule, we thought about how to save time. One big time saving was that a lot of armor parts were mirrored. I only had to sculpt the bracer, the upper arm plates, the hip plates and the leg armor once and could cast them twice. I only had to make sure that the shape is symmetrical. But still, it was a lot of work. I wanted to sculpt and mold the whole armor in one week. My fingers really started to hurt after a few days of working with the hot clay and the tools. At the end, I needed about one and a half weeks until I was done with all molds. I haven't slept a lot at this time, but I still enjoyed it. The whole armor was casted with SmoothCast 325 because it has a quite short cure time. It is a clear resin, so we added white pigments to it, which makes a great base color for the bone effect. 
This basically is how the whole armor was casted. It is called slush casting or roto casting. You just add several layers of resin until you get a nice and even coat of the entire inside of the mold. Details like the teeth were casted with the same resin and glued onto the bracers. I always love to see when everything comes together so nicely. All the casting takes a lot of time and there were still so many other parts of the costume which needed to be done that my friend Sabrina helped us out and casted all the armor parts for me. To save time we also decided to 3D print some of the armor parts. So while Laura sculpted most of the armor parts by hand, I also sculpted a few parts with Blender. This was actually my first time trying to sculpt something organic, but I'm quite happy how it turned out. One of the good things about 3D print is that they are super lightweight, so each of these massive shoulders weighs less than 400 gram. A resin version, even a holocast, would have been so much heavier. We also 3D printed small parts like the rings and all the plates for the gloss. When all armor parts were printed and casted, we of course had to clean them up. The 3D prints needed to be sanded, filled and primed. And also the casted parts needed some cleanup. After two weeks of sculpting, casting, printing and crying, we were finally done with the whole armor and at this point I just started to realize how complex this armor was and that I still had to figure out how to make all the attachments. But before that came one of my favorite parts, painting. I did most of the paint job with an airbrush. It's super fast and you get amazing results. To get a weathered bone effect, I sprayed on some color and wiped it away with a paper towel. This breaks up the soft look of the airbrush and gives the surface more texture. The paint job took me two days and next I had to do all the leather parts. We always try to make our costumes out of vegan materials, so for the leather parts I used a very thick fake leather. I had to make this leather flap at the front and also the skirt. I always like to use fabrics with a strong texture. This always makes the costume look so much more authentic. Especially when you create something with a medieval style. Textures make your costume look much more interesting also on photos. To fake the dragon skin part, I cut out scales out of foam and glued them onto a piece of fabric. On top of this, I glued down the fake leather with spray glue. I pressed down the leather with my hands and a tool. And it worked out as planned. I added some weathering and also added some shades to the scales to bring them out even more. When you work with good and thick fake leather, you can also make it look more authentic by sanding the surface a bit. The skirt was a real nightmare and was made in one night. It is made out of so many different layers and my sewing machine don't like this thick fake leather. So some parts were quite tricky, but at least I made it and I'm really proud how it turned out. But of course, I was not done with the sewing work. Next I had to make the top, which has some leather parts, but also some chainmail on the arms and the chest area. The easiest way to make pattern for sewing is to wrap your model into plastic wrap and crepe tape or any kind of duct tape, then you start drawing your patterns and cut them out. For the leather parts I again used the same fake leather I used for the skirt. And the upper section, which will be covered with armor, was made out of a soft cotton fabric. I added padding to the whole top to get more stiffness. This also helps to keep everything in shape while wearing. I always want my costumes to look pretty from the outside and also from the inside. So I added a soft lining which I sewed in by hand. I could have added a zipper on the back, no one would ever see it because it's gonna be covered with armor. But I wanted to keep it authentic, so I decided to add hollow rivets for a lacing. Of course, we wanted to use real chainmail. After some research, I found out about these flat rings and I think this looks so much better than the common ones. Ralph was already used to this work from one of our previous Nord costumes, so the chainmail was his job. 
To keep everything in place while moving, I sewed the chainmail parts to the leather top with a thick waxed cotton thread. This whole chainmail leather construction was a real challenge for me, and it was so nice to see how good Ralph could move in it. <laughs> the chainmail was even flexible enough for his biceps. The only thing that was missing was the collar and also some details. All the hand sewing took me forever. But I love these visible stitches. The last details were the leather straps and the rings. And then all the sewing work was done. The sewing part may not look special or impressive, but you have seen how much work went into it. But without the weathering, everything looks super flat and not really authentic. I like to use my airbrush for most of my weathering work. Just a little bit of shading and highlighting can make such a big difference in making a custom look better. Fake leather can be weathered with sandpaper and any kind of acrylic paint. Next part was doing all the attachments. This is one of the most important steps and sometimes we have to get very creative to fix all the armor parts to the body. You don't want your costume to fall apart at a convention while people are taking photos of you. It is not only important that everything stays in place, it is also super important that you have a good movement in your costume. It turned out that Ralph was not able to sit in the armor, but well, sometimes you just can't have everything. The shoes are always a very challenging part. You want them to look good and as close as possible to the reference and you also want them to be comfortable. The Dragonbone shoes has these awesome claws on the top. But you can't put a solid bone plate on top of your shoe. This would make it very difficult to walk because you can't bend your feet. Ralph 3D modeled and printed the claw and separated each bone. The idea was to connect them with elastic bands to make the whole claw construction super flexible. And it worked just perfectly. The rest of the shoe armor was made out of foam, which is also a great material for flexible armor. It is not very durable, which is the reason why we normally don't like to work with foam. But in this case it was a fast and perfect solution. The movement of the claws just looks so cool. My biggest challenge on this costume was definitely the helmet. Mostly because of the organic design, but also because of the proportion struggle. Video game characters just never have the same proportions than people in real life. I always try to stick to the reference as close as possible, but the helmet also had to fit to my head, so I was worried that the helmet would look too big, so I did some minimalistic changes on the design and shape, which no one will notice except of me. I had to separate the helmet into more than 20 parts and printed everything with our Zortrex M200. Luckily, we have three of these printers, so it did not took too long. Then we glued all parts together, filled all the seams and primed and sanded the horns and the helmet. When we have a complex piece like this helmet for example, we always clean up the separate pieces first before we attach them. This makes especially the sanding process a lot easier. While we were working on the helmet we started to notice that it turned out way too big, but we did not have enough time to make a new one until the first event. For painting the helmet, I started with a white base coat and continued adding shades. Again, to break up the soft airbrush look, I used a paper towel and continued until the whole helmet had a nice base shading. My hand sculpted pieces have a nicer and more natural texture than the 3D prints. So I tried to improve this by adding more texture with paint. We are really happy how the finished helmet looks like. The only thing that we messed up was the size. The scaling for Ralph's 3D body scan was too big, so the helmet also turned out too big. After the first event with the costume was over, we made a new helmet and this one finally fits perfectly. And of course, a real Dragon Slayer needs an impressive weapon. The Thesta let us choose between these new weapon designs and we thought the mace would fit the best. A 3D modeled the mace in Blender. Also, we have never made a maze before and we thought it's always more fun to build something new. Because I knew I had to wear the costume on several events and we have to travel a lot, 
I wanted to make the maze fit into our suitcase, so I made the top part with the blades detachable. Laura cleaned the prints and made the mold of the blade. So we only had to print and sand one of the blades and could use the mold to duplicate it six times. This saved us a lot of time. The paint job again was my job. Yay! It was actually a really easy paint job. For that I used my favorite spray paint from Montana. They have amazing metallic spray paints. To get an even more shiny look, I polished the whole surface with a graphite powder. Something I can also really recommend is rub and buff. On the blades I used it for the highlights. The last little detail was the handle. For things like handles, I always like to use more flexible fake leather. It is way easier to wrap around round objects. The maze turned out so cool and we are really happy with the sizing. Since we just had the artwork, we had to figure out the size by our own. We are so proud that we finished this costume in less than four weeks. Thank you Bethesda for your trust. Even when it was super stressful, I really enjoyed bringing this costume to life. I not only had fun creating this costume, I also had the honor to wear this costume at uh, several conventions and community events. I've met so many awesome people and it was just a pleasure to be part of the Elder Scrolls Online community, so thank you a lot for this Bethesda.